Hi, this is Dylan. It took Dylan 10 years to sign up for his first Spartan race. Dylan is a silly fool. Don't be like Dylan. It's that time again, race season. And this marks my second year running in OCR events. And I know what you're thinking. You look like a pro, but trust me when I say, last year was my first year ever running in any type of race, let alone an OCR event. So if you're thinking about signing up for one of these events and you're a wee bit nervous, don't worry because I've come to the rescue because I'm here to tell you five things that I wish somebody had told me before I registered for that first race one year ago. Jump in right into number five and one that I absolutely love to tell people. These races are not nearly as hardcore as people make them out to be. I know you've seen the commercials. I cannot imagine a better race than this. I'm addicted. Woo! I wanna f I know they've scared you, but trust me when I tell you, Spartan would not be able to stay in business if they made their races so hard that the average person couldn't get over the finish line. And if you hate burpees, you're in luck because from everything that I hear, burpees are now a thing of the past. So stop listening to all your friends who have done one already, who tell you that they're so hardcore. Yeah, they're challenging. They're meant to be. But that's what makes it so rewarding when you get across that finish line. Jumping right into number four, distance isn't the enemy, elevation is. All last year, I had to constantly listen to whiners complain about the elevation and how they didn't prepare and how it's kicking their butt. Oh, boo hoo. And you wanna know something? I'm the whiners. Yeah, it kicked my butt all last year, especially that Killington Ultra Race. I was ready for the distance. I was not ready for 20,000 feet of elevation. Most of the last, I would say, seven, eight miles, stopping every 50 or 100 feet to throw up. At this point, I'm gonna be walking away today without a medal around my neck. Now the good thing for most of you out there, unless you're absolutely out of your freaking mind and you're trying to do the Killington Ultra Spartan as your first event, you're not gonna encounter anywhere close to that much elevation. However, you are gonna probably encounter one, two, maybe 3,000 feet of elevation gain throughout your first race. So with that being said, the best way to prepare is to just get out there find the hill and start powering up. Trust me when I tell you that it doesn't matter if you can run 50 miles straight. If you're not good at powering up steep inclines, you're gonna get your butt handed to you. One last quick little thing. Don't forget about the declines. These declines can be just as taxing, if not more taxing on the legs than the inclines can. Number three. Don't get hung up training for specific obstacles. Every obstacle consists of two main things, picking up heavy, odd-shaped objects and carrying them for considerable distances and sometimes up some pretty steep inclines. There's only one loop. And uh, grip strength. The number one reason people fail most of the hanging obstacles is a severe lack of grip strength. Luckily for me, I've got access to this awesome set of monkey bars at my local UFC gym. But that doesn't mean that you gotta spend a ton of money on an expensive gym membership to train for these hanging obstacles. You could just as easily find a local playground with a set of awesome monkey bars to go train on. Just don't go when a bunch of little kids are playing there. You don't wanna be that creepy old man hanging around a bunch of little kids and there's some lists that you just don't want to be on. So that about wraps it up with the hanging obstacles. Let's get out of this nice, comfy, warm gym, get back outside, and jump on over to the mountain. <sighs> Whew! These long jumps are really starting to take a toll on the legs. 
One of the best ways that I've found to train for these heavy carries is while you're out on the trail, you find something heavy to pick up, you pick a point, and you try to carry it without putting it down until you reach that point. We're almost done, and coming in at number two is something that I am positive all of us have been guilty of at one point in time, and that is do not get hung up worrying about gear. And of course, I am guilty of this as well. All of this that you see right here is just some of the gear that I bought for my first year of these OCR events. And you know what? I didn't need any of it, except for maybe one of these good pair of running shoes that you see behind me. Now, what do I mean by a good pair of running shoes pertaining specifically to OCR events? Let me show you. The first sneaker is a Solomon trail running sneaker. Now what we're looking at is the tread on the bottom. See how these things have crazy grip? It's almost like cleats on the bottom of these. Now if you wore a pair of sneakers like this in your first Spartan race, you're gonna be gripping that course like you wouldn't believe. However, a pair of sneakers like this can run you anywhere between $120 to $200. So for now, we're gonna throw those probably shouldn't throw them behind me, but we're throwing those out. The second sneaker I have here is one of my old pairs of OnCloud road running sneakers. And once again, we're looking at the bottom. You can see that all of the tread has been worn off. So if you wore one of these sneakers out on the course, you're gonna be spending most of the time on your butt. All right. So like the other ones, throwing those out. Now, that leaves us with the last pair. This is a pair of Nike Pegasus road running sneakers. And I'm guessing that you probably have something similar already in your closet. But once again, let's take a look at the bottom because that's what's important. All right, on the bottom here, you could see the tread is still good. And although it is a pair of road running sneakers, it has a decent amount of tread on the bottom. A pair of sneakers like this will keep you on your feet out on that race course, and better yet, it's not gonna cost you anything because it's already in your closet. We made it to the end, and the number one thing that I wish somebody had told me, not just before signing up for my first Spartan race one year ago, but a decade ago, when I first learned about these races, is that the community is absolutely freaking incredible. I can promise you with pretty much 100% guarantee that within one hour of getting there, you will not feel like a beginner anymore. And that is because the community is absolutely and completely accepting of everybody, no matter their fitness level, their shape, their size, their age, doesn't matter. They will accept you, they will help you, and they will welcome you into this awesome and incredible community. So that does it. There's so much more that I could say about these races and events, but I'm gonna let you register and find out the rest for yourself. Up here's a list of all the Spartan races and the Savage race that I will be running in this year. If you live in the Northeast United States, I better see you at some of them. Make sure you come up and say hello. And if you enjoy this type of content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, stay safe, train hard, and believe in yourself. You're stronger than you think.